Hi parents, just a quick reminder that you can get links to all the video clips on the website authortoauthor.org in the parent resources section. And you can get notifications whenever we put a video up if you subscribe to this YouTube channel, Parent to Parent. Today I want to talk about a kind of universal learning principle. Most of the videos I've put up so far have been focused on writing. Um, the idea we're going to talk about today certainly impacts writers, but it really impacts anyone learning to do anything at any age. And it's these paired ideas of honoring approximations and nudging development. So basically, honoring approximations is just the idea that when someone's learning to do something, they learn to do it better if somebody is comfortable with them being doing it in a very approximated way, a very ish kind of way. A great book to read with this um, with your children is the book Ish by Peter Reynolds, which does a perfect job of capturing this idea of someone learning to do something in a very approximated ish kind of way. You can find that book all sorts of places. Right? And so we have to be comfortable with approximations, somebody doing it in an ish kind of way. And um, people learn better, learn best, right? When somebody is giving them just the right next small step, when they're giving them just the next little nudge, the next little bit, not giving them too many things to think about at once. People will learn to do anything better, more enjoyably, more efficiently, if somebody is honoring their approximation and being comfortable giving them just the next right small step, just the next little nudge, not giving too many things at once. I have lots of nudging stories, um, but the easiest one for me to think about right now is teaching someone to drive. We have four children. Our youngest are twins. I've taught the other three to um, drive. We have our, um, one of our twins, Molly, who's right now learning to drive. And um, so we've been every, day, you know, every once in a while going out and driving. And I have to keep these two ideas in mind of honoring approximations and nudging development. So first of all, I have to be comfortable with Molly having some very approximated driving maneuvers, some very turn-ish turns, right? Um, because she's gonna do things the way somebody just starting out would do them. She's doing driving the way a beginning driver would drive. And I have to be careful not to get frustrated with that. Not only be careful, I certainly get frustrated at times, but as soon as I do, I can see it make the learning more difficult for Molly. As soon as I get frustrated with something that she's doing, she's driving, then not only is she trying to think about driving, but she's also thinking about, am I frustrated with her? That makes it more difficult for her, right? So much easier to learn to do something when someone's very comfortable with your approximations. And when we're driving, you have to be, um, keep in mind the idea of nudging development. When we started driving, we didn't start off on the first day going down the interstate. We started off in a parking lot, take your foot off the brake, roll forward, put your foot right back on the brake, take your foot off the brake, put on the gas, right back on the brake, nudge by nudge by nudge, right? And then working our way up to side streets and neighborhoods and just bit by bit getting into more and more complex driving situations, right? And so um, in order to learn to drive, I have to be able to nudge your development and honor our approximations. And I wish I could say I always did that really well. There's times where I've um, either not honored approximations or have given too many things at once. And it makes the learning more difficult. Okay? Parents know this as well. When I do parent workshops, I often ask parents to turn and talk about a time that they learned to do something. Either there's something they're learning to do now as an adult or something they learned to do as a child. And they talk about which way did it go. And parents have no problem at all coming up with these type of situations. And it's, fun, it's interesting is I often hear the same learning and um, then get someone's learning, and but they're going different ways. So, for example, um, I often will hear the example of learning to cook, right? And one parent will talk about, oh, they had a parent who um, the first time they made something, they just gave they had them do this one job, and the next time they made it, they added something else in, and the next time something else, and just over time they learned how to do that, right? And then people who will share other same thing, learning to cook, but a parent who will say, oh, it's so frustrating to learn. Um, my um, dad would get frustrated with me. He would tell me too many things at once, right? And then it made it much more difficult. Um, if you have older children like me, right, you have, um, you are, you know this example with learning technology things, right? Um, it's always interesting. This it comes up all the time with parents where they'll say, ah, oh, my child is so great at just giving me, when they're trying to teach me something I could do on my phone, they're just great at giving me just this one little thing and then try this dad and then try this, right? And then another parent in the same workshop will say, oh, my child gets so frustrated with me. They give me too many things at once. They get frustrated and then I get frustrated and go ask somebody else, 
right? Exact same thing to learn, but it going very differently depending on whether somebody was nudging development and honoring approximations, right? And if, you, and if you pause the video right now and thought about it, you could easily find all sorts of situations in your own life where things were either easier to learn, right? Or easier to learn because someone was giving you just the right nudge and honoring your approximations, right? You'll learn to do it better, more enjoyably, more efficiently when someone's doing those two things, nudging your development and honoring your approximations. Well, um, there are just two other things with that. That whole idea of pushing development, it's not that you can't learn with pushes. You can, you can learn with somebody's less effective teaching. If it's something you really want to do, you'll learn how to do it even with somebody giving you too many things at once. It's just you'll learn to do it better, more enjoyably, more efficiently if someone's giving you just the right next small step. The other thing is sometimes parents will say, well, I have to push my child to get to do some, them to do something. That's a whole different issue. That's being directive or invitational. Now, there are times with my own children I'm very invitational, you might want to do this. There are times where I'm very directive, go do this right now. But whatever I'm asking them to do, if I'm teaching something, it doesn't matter if I'm invitational or directive, it has to be a nudge. I can be very invitational with a nudge, and I can be very directive with a nudge. But if I'm teaching something, right, it has to be with that next small step or it'll make it more difficult. All right. So um, we're going to end with a video clip that a parent sent over Twitter um, of their child, um, Evan, um, reading his book. Right? And evidently, Evan was a re highly re or much more reluctant writer until he started making books. And so as you watch Evan's video, just think about what happens if someone gets frustrated with Evan, right? Giving him or gives him too many things to think about at once, right? You can tell his parent clearly is not doing that, right? So we'll talk in our next video a little bit more about um, teaching things and how to do that a little um, differently. Um, thanks so much. Me by Evan. I went snorkeling at Disney. I saw fish. I also saw a lot of boats with seaweed. So you can see Mickey, Minnie, and you can see Donald also oh goofy at Disney. Good job, everybody.